All right. Couldn't help myself. Let's continue. All right, where's my latest save file? This one, it seems. All right, we can go to the Boris Bowl Club now, but... I want to finish the remaining two first. I think I already have what it takes. That's Zach Grammarie's wife and Trucy's mother. Talassa, I believe, was her name. Ah, oh, Alakazog! But, but how can you say this? How can you say she was struck by one of our bullets? Still in denial mode, eh? Talassa was at the greatest risk of being shot. And this clearly shows just how much danger she was in. I don't have anything. Hmm. Maybe that one's supposed to be last. How about this? I haven't even attempted this one yet. Hear it then. What are you hiding from me, Mr. Masham? I'm sorry, but I really don't know. I never met my client. True, when I asked the client's name, there were no psyche locks in sight. Regardless, you're hiding something. You have to be, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. Hmm, why are you doing this to me? Well, I've made my stand, no backing down now. So, what's Masham hiding? Yes, there was a reference. Why should I hide that? Huh? After the trial, I submitted everything to the court. My work, the sample page, everything. I can give you directions to the court if you'd like. Uh, that's fine. I know where the court is. Hmm. As you are just trying to get me to leave. Ah, Lord. I can sometimes be a little blunt. He doesn't know the client. I pretty much pieced together what it is from what you've said. Well, 
What is it then? You told me what you knew about the client. And I couldn't see any psyche locks. Psycho locks? Is that some sort of asylum security? Or a new hairstyle perhaps? But then they did show up, didn't they? Who was your client? Uh, as I said in court, I do not know. Not personally. Those words triggered the psyche lock. Again with the psycho locks. Now I really must know what they are. So, you didn't meet with a client, but someone else did. Maybe the real forger behind this evidence. Hmm, perhaps I'm hung up on this lock business. But I'm afraid you've lost me. Yeah, well, I didn't come here to talk about psyche locks. As long as I come to the right conclusion, it doesn't matter how I got there. And your conclusion is... The real forger behind this wasn't you, Mr. Mesham. But poppycock I don't know what you're talking about. That's my work, I tell you. Made here in my studio. Who else could have done it but me? That's the real question, isn't it? The forger wasn't you. And I don't have many other people to choose from. The real forger at Drew Studio is... The real forger is your daughter, Vera Misham, isn't it? Ridiculous! My daughter is only 12 years old, Mr. Wright. I've always been more one for landscapes, not surrealism. Nice comeback, but you're shaking in your boots. I've got you now. The only two people with access to the studio are you and your daughter. The psyche locks tell me you're not the forger, which makes your daughter the only possibility. <clears throat> I feel very much on the verge of going psycho log myself. <laughs> Poor people. They didn't know about fucking Phoenix Wright's fucking psychic superpowers. I don't know how you knew, but you're right. The one who made this page was my daughter, Vera, not I. She's only 12. A genius, you might call her. A precocious little girl outshining her father. There's been a lot of that going around recently. I let her play in the studio, and she watched me. Yeah. Freaking Von Karma, Franziska. Trucy, and now Vera. I let her play in the studio and she watched me. She taught herself in that way. The drafting tools and analytical devices I bought when they became necessary. They're my little girl's playthings now. Ah, do I detect a bit of fatherly pride? So, Vera was the one who made this page. Did she know who the client was then? Actually, the client came once. Here. To the studio. What? Why didn't you say so sooner? But their face was covered, and they did not want to talk to me. So, they talked to your daughter. I will speak only with the artist, the client told me. A little girl might know something about him. Okay, what do I do now? I wish to talk to her father a bit more. Mr. Mesham, I have a request. Let me guess. You'd like to speak with my daughter. Can I? My daughter has never been one to talk to strangers. She's quite shy. Extremely so, actually. With only one exception. Which was? Oddly enough, it was that client. I left the studio while they talked. I returned when they had finished, and she was laughing. It was the first time I'd seen anything of the sort. Please, let me speak with her. All right. Hmm. That leaves it. 
the client can only be one person. I've been suspecting he was the main villain all along in this game. Vera, was it? I I'd like to have a friendly chat. I'm Phoenix Wright, ex lawyer and pianist. I'm still looking for the keys that say Dore me. Can't find them anywhere. I'm no good at this. I need something to get through this girl. Then there's this. My stamp. Hey, she spoke. She can talk. Yeah, so this stamp. Great magicians, aren't they? Isn't true grammar amazing? Ah. Uh. Hmm, yes? Oh. I especially like those two, Zack and Valent. I mean, they're, uh, <laughs> just so magical. Aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah, whenever I go to one of their shows, I'm like, whoa, magic, you know? Me too, me too. I love them. So, so cool. It's like, like magic, yeah. Alright, she's talking. Not saying much, but it's a start. I went and saw them with father the other day. The opening ceremony at the Grammarie Museum of Magic. Grammarie Museum? They have one of those? It makes sense now that they have their... One commemorative stamp. So, have you been to one of their shows? Just once, when I was little, with father. The Grammarie's on stage. It was like a dream. Disappearing, reappearing, cutting apart, putting back together. They do it all. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can keep telling me stuff like this. You know, about Zack and Belt, maybe? Oh, oh, sure. I'd better get Aston before she changes her mind. They're the best in the world. Huh? Oh, you mean true grammar? Of course. Father gave it to me. Your father? But I asked him about it. He didn't know how you got it. Oh. Oh, um. I guess I just took it. Yeah. Took it? Father got a letter. From that person. That person? You mean that letter was from the client? Oh, we talked about the grammaries forever that day. I'm sure that's why I was sent the stamp. I didn't want to just send it back, so I took it. They're a sneaky one, this client. They were trying to get on her good side. I don't go outside much. I like the painting here. Why don't you like the outside? There's bad people out there. Well, true. There are lots of good people too. Actually, I should tell you. She was almost kidnapped once. K kidnapped? Since then she's been... Well, you can see for yourself. She refuses to leave the house. I see. Wait, but that doesn't make sense. She said she went to the Grammarie Museum. With you, in fact. Ah, oh, yes. Actually, she was quite insistent on it. Much to my surprise. That was the first and last time she expressed such a desire to me. That person gave me a good luck charm. Good luck charm? For when I absolutely had to go outside. Yes, apparently. She received something. A gift. From that client, actually. She won't tell me what it was. Father, I told you to keep that a secret. The client, huh? As I have to hear about. 
So, your father tells me you're good at painting all sorts of things. I really like painting. A lot. Father is always very happy when I paint them exactly the same. So, you did this too? Oh, yes. That was my first job. Your first? All I used to do was paint the same thing I saw. But this was totally different. The pen slips and the way the writer held the pen and the pressure on the nib. I had to use a microscope and analyze it on the computer. She seems happy. Ah, her work was the last nail in the grammarly coffin. Guess no one told her. So, you met the person that asked you to do this job. Did you talk with them? What's this about a good luck charm you received? I can't talk about it. Eh? If I do, it won't work anymore. That's what I was told. Yeah, but I really, really have to know. Psyche locks! Right, time to do some psyche unlocking. Right, here we go. I can afford two mistakes at most. So I'm pretty sure you recover five of your HP bar. You have a total of ten. You usually always lose two. <clears throat> You seem to trust this client. Quite a lot, in fact. So they gave you this stamp. No, that's not why. They listened to me, to my problem. A problem that keeps her inside all this time. Don't go outside if you don't want to. That's what they told me. But when I absolutely had to go out, all I had to do was use a good luck charm. A good luck charm? That your client gave you? I think I know what your client might have given you, actually. Is this your good luck charm? I mean, there's only one thing in the evidence that it could be. If this doesn't bring good luck, I don't know what would. I see. Good luck charms are different for different people, I guess. Fuck. That's the beautiful thing about being totally wrong. Uh, shit. Alright, it appears I lack information. Let's call it quits with these two for now. We've unlocked a new place. Let's go there. I'll be taking my leave now. Still have some work to do back at the office. I guess I'll go back to my piano. To be honest, it's better when you aren't playing. This frigid culinary dungeon almost feels comfortable. Later then. <sighs> Two hours left on my shift. Wonder if we'll get any customers tonight. Ahem. Do you know who I am? Who I am? No. But if you hum it, I can play it. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't do requests. How about a different sort of request? You see, I play cards. Ah, a customer. 
I was just hoping someone would come in and save me from a night at the Keys. I seek a true competition. I have heard the Boss Bowl Club is the place for this. Now I see the rumor is true. And this is... A friend of yours? Ah, don't mind me. I'm just your friendly neighborhood newsman. Ah, he will not be playing tonight. When his business is finished, I shall send him home. This competition will be between us. No others. The right talent agency represents two artists. And I'm number two. I play piano. Well, sort of. It's actually just a front for my real talent. Which is playing poker. Don't ask me how I got started. I don't remember. Bruh. But I'm good. Real good. Didn't take long for the rumors to get around. Little did you know, this the guy you're fighting right now is the guy you fought seven years ago. You're first, in fact. And the reason why you knew you were real good at it. <laughs> Go to the Borscht Bowl Club if you want a real game. That guy's never lost. People don't come to hear me tickle the ivory. They come to watch me play cards. Is this a seedy poker club? No, it's a restaurant. We don't play for high stakes. There's no money involved. But real players carry cash, and they're always thirsty. It's a handy source of income for the club owner. <coughs> then let's compete. I'll take you to the room. The hideout, yes. But before we go... Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Shady Smith. Oh, and I'm Bushel. Sweat Bushel, a new supporter. Oh, I'm... No, no. Phoenix Wright. Huh? You must always look a man in the eye when you make your introductions. You still do not know who I am. Have we met? Ah! Can't be, but you're Zack Grammary? Yes, the reincarnation act of the century. Pity I have only an audience of one. You, Zack Grammary? This must be one bad dream. The census guy ruined my life. You dare? Da. da. We will play soon. Ready, Darun? Da. I will be preparing the hideout for you. Are you really him? The Isaac Grammary? Now, I am Shady Smith. Remember this. How many years has it been now? Six? In exactly three days from now, it will be seven. I cost you much inconceivable fear. I fear. Inconvenience, I fear. Yeah, you could say that. Is she well? Trucy, I mean. She's fine. I've got her working already. Hope you don't mind. I hardly need to express my gratitude, but you have it. This is why I have come. That, and to settle a matter of cards. By what you mean, poker? Oh, size, he's serious. I despise losing above all else. And so I have decided that I will win tonight, no matter what it takes. I know this guy's type, and they're dangerous. Everything's about the competition, all else is secondary. Perhaps we should take this time to talk before we play. I know you have much to ask me. And I, you... You competed that day seven years ago, too. Ah, yes. You must have been surprised. Called to the detention center out of the blue. Two. One. Showdown time. What? Why are these guys always getting nothing but full houses? 
I, I lost. It's only a game of poker. A game I've played for a long time and only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. You chose your defense attorneys by playing poker. Some are hired, others fire. When you compete, you see a man's true nature. You know what I speak of. I know that you do. Trucy's power? Trucy? She's in a class of her own. For seven years, I played poker here at the Borscht Bowl Club. And I've never lost once. I'm good, but not that good. I win because whenever there's a big game, I bring in Trucy. She sends me signals. Daddy, you've got a good hand. Might have a chance if you act quick. Better call him soon. Can you tell me what her power is? Judging a person's thoughts by reading their reactions is a staple of performance magic. But those of Trucy's line possess far greater skill. Her line? Recall, you were the second man to whom I've lost. At the Fee Grammary. That was the first time I learned of this power, as you call it. Wait, so you're saying the power's genetic? It's just in the grammary blood or something? Blood. Really? I am sorry, but it is not something told lightly to outsiders. It is nothing you need to know at this time. It's some kind of grammary secret then. Fine. She's 15 this year. Still trying her best to follow in your footsteps, you know. I see. When I planned my disappearing act, it was the thought of her alone that gave me force. Wait, you're planning on vanishing from the get-go? Yeah, I figured. Yes, for that, I must apologize. However, I could not be found guilty that day. Because of this. This? A transferal of rights, you see, the signature. Transferal? That's like the fee grammary signature, isn't it? I hereby give all rights to the secrets, staging and performance of my magic. Yep. It was exactly how I thought it was. Valent wanted all the power. And did all this. So it could be painted in a better light, get some publicity, and get all the power. And get away with all the bullshit. The recipient name below. The recipient's name is you, Zach Grammary. Yes, it is I. Wait, this page looks torn. You recall the diary, yes? Ooh. How could I forget? Scrap of paper lost me my attorney's badge. This is the real page that was torn from the book. But Nippy gave it to me that night. He could have told me this earlier, like seven years earlier. Once again, I must apologize. It was all I could do to prepare for my escape from that courtroom. But why? The greatest of Magnifi Grammarie's illusions are true art. As such, they are well protected by this document. Only its bearer may perform his illusions on stage. Sounds like a pretty important thing to have if you're his disciple. As the rightful heir to his art, I too wanted a rightful heir. Rightful? I'm sure you know who I chose as my successor. Your daughter. This is why I have risked all to come here tonight. Brush him. Sir! Ah, here you go. What's his? A letter passing the rights I have inherited to Trucy. I would have you sign here as a witness. 
But I'm not a lawyer anymore. You need a public notary besides. I may not look it, but I'm a certified notary. You are? By day, I wear a notary's glasses and hunt for news. Also by day, I wear a reporter's glasses and notarize. When I take off the glasses, I can't see very well. Your signature, please. This is the first reason I have come here tonight. Damn! Ah, I finally figured it out. Now I know why you've come out of hiding only now. It's been seven years, you said. Precisely. There's a lot that covers your situation. After seven years, missing persons are considered to be legally deceased. If someone was to vanish from the face of the earth seven years ago, they would lose all rights as a living person after seven years from that day. Not to mention all of their possessions. Exactly. Which is why I am here. I risk sowing my, my face in the public for the sake of this document. Before my seven years are up, you might say I am securing my daughter's inheritance. A uh, little did you know you were literally, actually, not just going going to be literally deceased, rather than just legally as well. Soon after. Do you really need this document? And you inherit your estate automatically? Not in this case, I am afraid. In this case? Yes, I received the performance rights from Magnifi Grammarie. However, this was done in secret without witnesses. Before Magnifi died, Two potential successors to his repertoire were named myself, Zach Grammarie, and Valent Grammarie, not Trucy. See, so you do need this document. I have known Brushen since before I vanished. He is a man I trust. Now, only three know of my rebels. I took the liberty of looking into Trucy's background, found you had no other close kin. It is as you say. I'm kind of hoping he'd say something about the mother at his point. Now everyone else but Trucy's mother. It's a mystery. Alright, let's see what we can get out of him. I don't think there's anything else I can do right now apart from this. I have to know more about this power of Trucy's. Sorry, I got real thirsty. So I grabbed some flat water. Doing Shady's voice calls on me. Like she can see right into people's minds. The first time I saw her do it, it blew mine. And after you were done having your mind blown, you took her to play cards with you. Or gotta use the resources at hands, I always say. Yet I myself have no such power. <coughs> but Trucy does. Why is that? Maybe Trucy got her power from her mother? Thalassa Grammarie. I will not speak of that. Thalassa is officially missing, correct? 
And I think I know why you don't want to talk about her. Do I have evidence? I'm pretty sure. I don't. Three of you were a team once. Not that the entire country doesn't already know this. At your peak, you were the biggest stars around. Yet, there's another story behind the fame. One that not many know. Alasa lost her life during a rehearsal. You and Val Grammarie's bullets. It was an incident. It, it wasn't me. How could I shoot my dear Alasa? Sure, Val would say the same thing. Why, it's just like another murder I might mention. Damn you. Her eyes, I loved Alasa's eyes. To think they could read my mind it was frightening. Yet there was a warmth in them that I felt, like an embrace. She's dead, and Magnifi Grammarie has joined her. But the only one with her power left now is Trucy. Is there Zack? I do not know. I don't need any power to see through that one, buddy. There's someone else, someone other than Trucy. Someone who inherited Palas's power. Ha ha, how would I know? The chances are slim. It would take a miracle to learn the truth. Or maybe one has already occurred. There's someone else with the power, and I know who. Bruh, Apollo? This, this boy? His name is, I forget, something weird. Who could he be? An attorney. A attorney? I noticed him when I went to visit a friend's law offices. So, what are we to make of this, oh great ex-attorney? You can show me pictures of strange boys all you like, but you could at least say something like, I'm this boy, I could use a laugh. Perhaps you wouldn't laugh if you knew the facts. This might not be 100% proof, but it's close. There's a link between this boy and Talasa. Actually, it's more for Ring. A ring? Perhaps this will refresh your memory. You just so happen to have the evidence showing this missing link. I do. I don't have... I don't have Apollo's bracelet. I don't have anything. Wait, maybe I should try presenting evidence and stuff. Hmm. 
Presenting evidence has been was the only thing I haven't been doing yet. Maybe I should do it. Hey, look at this gun! Maybe presenting evidence will let me unlock unless there is unless I do already have all the evidence I need to unlock certain people, certain stuffs. This is from the future! Alright, who do I have the best chance with what I have right now? Let me try this thing again. Lasso at the, the greatest risk of being shot, and this clear shows how much danger she was in. Let me make a save. Finally in save slot 9. Group Grammarie's performance were very, very popular. So popular, they even made a commemorative stamp at the height of your fame. We were not merely the latest craze. We were an age. A golden age. It's all here in this stamp. There's the lasso, yes? Ugh. Susie's mother is missing, I hear. 
What happened to her? I... I don't know! Part of his memory is still locked up. There's one thing you're failing to address. What's that? As you say, our troop was a world unto itself. If our leader Magnifi was so inclined, he could hide anything he wished with ease. But Mr. Wright, then he would have hit a crime, making him an accomplice. Not a great foundation for blackmail. Man's got a point. One of the troop members died in an accident and then the fee covered it up. His innocence would come into question. Found the right address, Mr. Wright? So close. There has to be something. But how Thalassus' death could affect Zal, Zack, and Valen's relationship with Magnifi. I see in your eyes you still have something to say. How can you possibly more than you already have? Approved by Thalassus' accident, tied your hand so completely. With a person. It's going to take a little knowledge of the players to crack this one. The accidental death of Zack's wife tied both your hands. And this information proves why Magnifi held so much power over you. Ah, 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 ah. Were you by any chance trying to threaten me? No, of course not. You'll never make a bla good blackmail artist. Never. My career choice I've been considering, actually. Okay, I think that failure thingy sort of told me what I needed to do. I need to show a person. I'm sure I'm on the right track. I'm on the right track with person. I thought it was Trucy for sure. Eh. Well, shit. Okay, I think I'm close. But, it's clear I lack information, but I have a theory. I need to complete this one first, in order to confirm my theory. I won't say anything, but it involves family. Alright, I'm in my last lag here, so... Seem to 
trust this quite a lot because they gave you the stamp. What is her good luck charm? Am I missing something? Hold on. Wait! God damn it! That's a pretty bottle. Ah! Da -da 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 -da. I already have all the pieces to the puzzle. You know what? I'm looking up a walkthrough. Oh, I can present Trucy's locket. God damn it. Right. Let's do that then. This person in the photo is Trucy's mother. How did you come by this? She showed it to me. She said her mother was gone. Then, it is so. Huh? She is gone. What more is there to say? Um, lots? Ah, I know, I know. Well, you're still here. According to my in-depth research, Trucy's mother, Magnifique Grammarie's only daughter, end quote. Trucy's mother, Magnifique Grammarie. What?
Russell, you say too much. Eh, eh, what? Why am I the bad guy? Why? Zack decked them. And in case, Mr. Wright, this discussion is over. Class of Grammarly, she's the most mysterious of the whole lot. I need to gather me some more evidence, clearly. Well, the prelude may have been longer than the main attraction. Shall we begin our game? My final competition. Final why? As you said, I have come out of hiding today to make this document legally binding. Once that is done, I shall slip once more underground. Without seeing your daughter? Would be best if I did not. Seven years ago, we played. Seven years ago, I lost. I already lost to Magnifi. I do not care to lose to another. And I have heard that you never lose. It's just a rumor. Yes, for it is impossible to never lose unless one has an ace up one's sleeve. As a magician, it costs me no end of irritation. I think a mere lawyer might be out there pulling the wool over so many eyes. Hey, I just signed your document for you. Maybe you could try lighting up? That was that. This is this. For my final competition, I will destroy your perfect record, Phoenix Wright. This will be my final performance. You are warned. This guy's beyond serious. So much for a fun evening of cards. Alright, I got some chocolate. Let me eat them. Hold on. Russell, you may leave. Ah, but you're, it's your last game. I mean, what a scoop. I punch and I punch, but still, it's not enough. There, I just remember the future or prior engagement. Doodles, gentlemen. Oh, and nice meeting you, piano man. Let's begin, dealer. Da. You will be witness to our competition. Da. It is honor for me. Why haven't I seen her around here before? Ah, that reminds me. I saw a familiar place as I entered this restaurant. He did not seem to notice me, however. Gavin, I believe was his name. You know him? After the fashion. Listen, Phoenix Wright. One can learn much from a true competition. Remember this. The rest was there as history. The grammary power. I'm close to understanding it, but I need more. And I knew where to get it. Trucy's mother. I need to meet that reporter again, that was clear. And one other thing. In the moment my final competition with Zack began that night, a name was running through my head. The name of a man who was now in prison. Name Zach Grammarie knew, but how and why? Wait, what? Morse Bowl Club isn't done yet? Bruh. Well, well. Isn't this an unexpected surprise? What errand brings you down to my cramped confines? Gavin. You look well, Phoenix, right? You too, Gavin. Life has been full of surprises for both of us. I have no doubt you never expected to lose that attorney's badge of yours. And I'll bet you never expected to wind up here. Shady Smith. 
was the name of the man you killed. Do you know who he really was? Who he was? Zach Grammar, you know, the defendant. I remember him, of course. Would you say Smith was Zach? Impossible. Don't even try to tell me it was a coincidence. What did I just say? Alright, we got new whole new sprites for him. In here. Life is full of surprises, don't you think? After that trial, you arrested and found guilty. But your motive was never made clear. A mistake I plan to remedy. You're not an attorney anymore, Phoenix, right? What possible conclusion do you think this investigation of yours can lead to? I killed a man named Smith with a bottle because I am an evil human being. Isn't that enough? Not for me, it isn't. I need to know why you did it, Gavin. You recall that case seven years ago? Ah, yes. The trial where Zach Grammarie pulled his famous vanishing act. My brother won his fair share of praise and adoration for that trial, as I recall. Genius prosecutor reveals crooked attorney, was it? That was when I met you, wasn't it? Was it now? The Bar Association Review Board voted unanimously for the strictest punishment. Unanimous. Save for one dissenting opinion. Yours. It was my brother who was responsible for putting you in that position after all. For seven years we've been friends. Yet I still don't understand you. But right, your friendship toward me was never sure. You suspected me then. As you still do now, don't you? Honestly, right now, I'm not sure what I think. You didn't just brain a guy with a juice bottle for no reason. Tell me why you did it. Persistent, aren't you? I came here because I remembered something. Night of our game. Zach Grammarie mentioned your name, Gavin. Why do we need a flashback for something that literally only happened a few minutes ago? After that, he was killed. And I asked you to help me. I remembered your kindness back when everyone had turned on me. I have to know. Why did you kill Shady Smith? No, Zach Grammarie. Here we go. Holy shit. Something wrong, right? No, it's nothing. You shouldn't push yourself so hard. Life is to be taken easy, you know. He's doing his nails. Bruh. <laughs> You're thinking what self-respecting man would use nail polish? Not really. I know appearance is her big thing with you. You know what I say. One cannot live a beautiful life without beautiful nails. First rate in all things. Except nothing less. That certainly does look like a first rate nail polish. I like the sparkly bottle. It's crystal. You're so drawn to it. Please, have one. It's on me. You're fucking kidding me. 
I had to do all this just for her goddamn lucky charm. Well, I got it. Yellow envelope. It's not nice to peek at other people's mail. Get mail here in jail? How'd I do? Though they read it first, apparently. Still, I am allowed to pressure of correspondence. Packages and the like are a different matter, however. Hmm. Sneaking a peek is out of the question. Add some chair, just looking at it makes me want to take a seat. So I have to add a whole digit to the price of one of my office chairs. In here, comfortable chairs the most valuable thing in the world. You have to add two digits to the price of the standard prison issue chair for this. It's strange, you know. Here I am in the solitary, and yet the books keep piling up. Looks like you've got more than books up there. Ah yes, my collection. I have a few friends on the prison staff. They show me a little kindness. Just a little. Nice roses. Taking care of this one here? Ah yes, she's surprisingly delicate, you know. It requires careful tending, but she is my best friend, as they say. Best? Come on, now I'm starting to feel bad for you. Oh, of course. She's known to bite, if handled roughly. The rose bites? I'm speaking of the photo next to the rose. My retriever, Bon Gold. Cute but feisty. Every dog has its thorn. Right, we're done here. I got what I need.